Hello everyone, uh, my name is Tony and today I'll be going in detail what a mesocosm is. And a mesocosm is a system in which different kinds of environment can be simulated, uh, whether it be closed or open. An open system Oh, when do I always mess it up? All right. An open system can exchange both energy and matter, while a closed system can only exchange energy. And that energy is most likely going to be light or heat energy because that's the energy essential for sustaining life. Let me give you an example. An open system can be your own fish tank, a hamster cage, or a pig pen. These systems both require, in order for you to make your beloved companions live, you have to feed them. And feeding them is a kind of exchange of matter, where you are putting the food inside the cage to keep the system. Your cage, or wherever you are putting your animals in, that itself can be a system. Now a closed system. A closed system is slightly more complicated, not in the concept at least, but to build one. A closed system is basically a system that can only exchange energy. So that system must be sealed after you are done with building one. That means that all of carbon dioxide produced by the organism must be recycled via the magical process of photosynthesis. All the consumers inside must be filled with food within the system, so whether it is a plant or another organism that the animal is consuming, they must produce so that they do not run out. Uh, all the cycles that you see in biology textbook and other countless factors must be taken into account if you want to build a self-sustaining system with the right amount of balance in each hierarchy of food pyramid. But do not worry, nature always finds its way. There it is. There it is. You're implying that a group composed entirely of female animals will Breed. No, I'm, I'm simply saying that life uh, finds a way. So what is the importance of all this? A closed system is similar to a flight simulator. It mimics a particular environment and is currently used to test varieties of changes in the environment. One prime example can be testing an acidification of the marine environment. The researchers put organisms and vegetations similar to that of a real marine environment and create two boxes, one for the controlled and another for the different level of acidity. And according to the results and observations of the differences they get from the controlled environment with the altered environment, the researchers were able to find the impact of ocean acidification on ecological cycles and changes in vegetation. Similarly, I'm doing an investigation with a mesocosm to see if there's any change in the balance of carbon dioxide and oxygen between a brightly lit environment and a dimly lit environment. So the experiment we're doing today is to investigate the effect of luminosity on the difference in ratio between carbon dioxide and oxygen. So the research question here today is what is the effect of the amount of luminosity, which is sunlight, on the difference in ratio between carbon dioxide and oxygen in a closed self-sustaining system? Alright, so there are two types of hypotheses here for this particular investigation. The first hypothesis is that within the measured 24-hour period, the amount of sunlight will create a larger difference in ratio in comparison to that of the calibrated ratio uh, between carbon dioxide and oxygen. And the second hypothesis, which is the null hypothesis, is that amount, the amount of sunlight will create uh, no statistical influence over the ratio of carbon dioxide and oxygen. So after considering uh, various factors to have a self-sustaining system, I have put several vegetations to keep it more sustaining because there is going to be lots of humidity because it's insulated. And some of the plants that I have put is dollar weed, uh, peace lily, uh, devil's ivy, kung alexia, which is a type of grass, and crosses spike moss, carpet sedum, and spider, which is arenus ventricosis. 
and Harlequin, Ladybird, and Aphid. So the apparatus for data collection is that there is going to be four vernier oxygen gas sensor, uh, four vernier uh, carbon dioxide gas sensor, and four LabQuest data collection device with connected battery port, and, and that's pretty much it for the collection. And you just have to plug it in and just record the data uh, for 24 hour period. And that is pretty simple. So after due deliberations, I have calculated the theoretical population per meter squared, which is approximately 7.5. Uh, there are the experimental population that we have put inside the container is we put two spiders, uh, 30 ladybird and 4,000 aphids. And producers, uh, we just put as much as possible because the in it increases the species by putting more than enough producers to ensure that the closed system can self-sustain, even though the other ecological role may fail. So after collecting five samples of data, I have okay. So after after okay. So after collect. Uh, after collecting five samples of data on the right and the left side, which is the brightly lit environment and the dimly lit environment, it seems that the brightly lit environment has higher fluctuation in carbon dioxide and oxygen, and the, the left side, which is the dimly lit environment, uh, has much more stable uh, fluctuation of carbon dioxide and oxygen. But wait, we cannot only assume that kind of a we cannot take, okay, but wait, we cannot take that kind of assumption right now because we only have five samples of data and that five samples of data is, is very lacking. In order to assume uh, and have a statistical significance, we must ensure that there will be more than at least 10 or 20. So if you're curious about the results for this investigation, uh, then please stay in touch with us by subscribing down below and uh, keep in tune in September to see those findings. Thank you.